well, perhaps sometime maybe midnight tomorrow. Yeah, we've got to get those um, those snow levels to lower, which we will eventually. But first, we're getting the rain. I just looked it up, actually. So Redding, California would typically see just under five and a half inches of rain all of October and all of November, the entire mm. two months put together. And we're going to see that just from these few events that we're seeing. Well, the nature's like, here, hold my beer. Let me show you what this river can Truly. do here. Right now, first system's in here. This is not a super soaker. We're actually seeing rain showers right now, Tacoma and Washington and uh, in Seattle and even Portland, but yeah, this is truly the appetizer. We are seeing some needed snow here across the Rockies and the Wasatch too. Yeah, so we're getting the snow in the higher elevations. We're getting a ton of rain though. And here's the thing, watch what happens as we head into Sunday morning. The water hose is on. It's directed across Northern California down into North Central California, and it just keeps going. That's yeah. the problem. The cold front really doesn't come through to midnight tomorrow. Then the snow levels crash down. Then you bring heavy snow, maybe a couple of feet of snow, but that's after maybe a half foot or more of rain because remember the mountains here 10 12 plus thousand feet they ring even more rain and moisture than eventually snow out of these clouds yeah so look at some of these totals that we're expecting here as mentioned across portions of northern california five to eight but as you get that rain ringing out of those systems up against the westward slope of the sierra we're talking about maybe up to a foot of rain in some places which is going to be problematic crazy crazy rain and Crazy flooding, crazy mudslides, all will be headlines nationwide over the next couple of days. Certainly will. So stick with the Weather Channel through the weekend as we track these storms. Meteorologist Evan Wooten brings us developments from the ground on Sunday starting at 9 right here on Weekend Recharge. So these storms don't just stop in the west. They push on towards the central U.S. and they also mean more severe weather on the way. Dr. Postel is tracking that in this very short period of time that we would typically see in maybe, you know, uh, a couple months. We're seeing a lot of rain in areas that don't see a ton of rain this time of year usually. Uh, you know, whenever you're talking about 8 to 12 inches of rain there, especially when you're having a landscape it's, that has a, quite a change in elevation, you're running into big issues here. So what we've highlighted is some of the burn scars of some of the bigger fires across Northern California. Uh, here you can see that burn scar outside of Paradise. And with that, you can see in some of those areas where we're in the higher elevations, we're getting maybe up to a foot of rain over those burn scars, and that is so problematic. So what leads to a mudslide? Well, a mudslide basically happens when you get all of this rain over soil that just does not have, uh, even if it does have trees and vegetation on it, a ton of rain, especially this amount of rain, can kind of uh, really sink into that ground and rain water acts as a solvent. So it's loosening up the ground and it's becoming this mass of mud that eventually gets so heavy, especially in the higher elevations, that it ends up going down uh, in elevation. It runs down the hill, runs down the mountains. It can pick up large boulders and feet of mud. And here Here's the thing about a flow speed. It's about 10 to 35 miles an hour, but it can reach 60 miles per hour. These are so serious. On average, we see 25 to 50 deaths from mudslides a year, and we have the perfect setup, especially across Northern California for those mudslides. Well, you stick with the Weather Channel through the weekend as we track these storms. Meteorologist Tevin Wooten brings us developments from the ground on Sunday, starting at 9 right here on Weekend Recharge. Average seems kind of chilly across so much of the, the nation because we've been so warm uh, this uh, October so far. So temperatures right now across the upper west there still in the 30. Sun's coming up. Things are warming up. But look at the warmth you're waking up to in Dallas sitting at 73 degrees currently. Yeah, when you've been used to above average and uh, high humidity, just near normal and low humidity, drier air feels very, very crisp to you. We've got dew points down in the 40s in Cincinnati, but can you tell where we have an influx of moisture still? Dew points in the 60s across much of Texas, southern Louisiana. It's feeling muggy there this morning. Yeah, that's going to make our highs in the mid 80s on the thermometer feel more like maybe the upper 80s to your body because even in dew points in the 60s, it adds more moisture, makes you feel warmer here across the Midwest, but also that's going to lead to some storms. Definitely something we're concerned about. And you know, some of us had a nice cool down, but that warm up comes today again, especially across the south and Sunday, even warmer in some places. But look at Monday. We have a, 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 it's such a seesaw right now. You're up, you're down, especially a place like St. Louis. You went from the 80s to the 60s, back to the 70s to the 50s. So it's been all over the place. Looking on towards the end of the month into November, we're still calling for well above average temperatures surging from the southwest, the northern plains, Great Lakes and into the northeast and New England. All right, let's take a live look right now 